Hello everyone, welcome to Chasing a Murder. We are on part 127 of Life Beyond the Grave, and from here on, it's going to get very interesting. This is actually a story on Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. If you're not familiar with them, well, you're about to be. A couple that used doomsday scenarios in order to create chaos. These two destroyed so many lives you can't even count and continue to destroy lives as we speak. This is just a small example of how many people were affected by Larry, um, sorry, Chad and Lori Daybell. It's incredibly hard to believe that so many people, their lives could have been destroyed by just a few, a handful, in fact, people. And this isn't something where you can say sorry and go back to normal. No, there are people whose lives have been taken. And the most shocking lives that were taken was her own children, JJ and Tylee. So where do we leave off? We left off where we were talking about how Charles had plans to take JJ to school. And Charles had actually had plans to have an intervention with his wife, who he thought had fell off the deep end. To his, I don't know how it could be his surprise, he was surrounded and shocked. Charles is no longer here with us. Let's talk about Kay and Larry Woodcock. Now, she's lost her brother. And she's trying to get a hold of Lori and find out exactly what happened. But according to Kay Woodcock, Lori Vallow is acting very strangely. The few times that Kay could get a hold of Lori, she said that she's acting so strangely. She acts strangely when she told the family about Charles' death and did not mention the cause. Like several people, a relative had to search Charles' names online to find out he had been shot. During this time, the way that Kay Woodcock felt, she said, quote, We knew it was murder. We knew Charles' death wasn't justifiable, that it was a homicide. But Kay Woodcock would have to be very careful how she talked to Lori Fallow. She knew this because she could lose any type of contact with her grandson, J.J. Fallow. I haven't had time to do major updates in this area, but I'll do my best to try to you know, make the old information seem more interesting. Now that they knew that Charles Vallow had passed away, they were trying to find out what Lori's plans were for his services, his memorial, and celebration. And right now, Lori would have Charles Vallow's phone for at least 24 hours. And another thing is that Charles' son, Z, was having a lot of trouble getting any information from Lori as well. Lori just refused to give them any information on what happened to Charles. The fact that Lori was oblivious to the fact that Charles was on the news was kind of interesting. C. Charles's son told the news outlet, East Idaho News, that Lori refused to provide information about his father's memorial service or where his remains were. Z and his brother S were able to track down at least the mortuary where the father's remains were being held. He described a very strange encounter there. They come in contact with the funeral director, and they say that he was very shaky and nervous. Charles' sons asked him for information, and he said something like, I can't tell you that. It was requested that I tell you nothing. Now remember, they had found out through news articles what really happened to Charles. This is at the Valley of the Sun Mortuary and Cemetery. They would attend this memorial service. And they uh, actually, Z would say that Lori herself would not attend this memorial service. So something she's good at disappearing. The man she was married to 13 years didn't have any respect for any of these family members to show up and show her grief or love. 
they would beg for their little brother, JJ, to be able to attend a memorial, but Lori would refuse. A lot of people are speculating as to why. The main reason is she knew that JJ had answers that they were looking for and that these people might ask for those answers. Many of us believe that Tylee Ryan and J.J. Vello might have witnessed the whole entire thing. Z said, I love to hang out and play with him and watch movies and run around. He would call me time to time, something like 15 to 20 times a day. Then it would drop to two or three times a day and then just stopped. So they're not able to communicate with their brother J.J. Now, one of Charles' other sons says he doesn't buy the fact that um, Alex and Lori claimed that Charles was shot in self-defense. S said, I don't believe any of it. My dad was never verbally aggressive, never raised his voice, never physically threatened anyone or anything like that. Sorry, guys, I'm having to edit a lot right here because I keep saying his name. I usually go through my mistakes. Um... He continued to say that his dad was very good at baseball. He played in college, so if he was going to defend himself, he wouldn't just tap an aluminum bat on someone's head on self-defense. The entire story doesn't make any sense. Charles' son said that he was fearful of Alex Cox and implied that he believes that Alex's death may have been a result of foul play. Now, something S mentions is the fact that he was kind of fearful of Alex Cox and that while or during the time that Alex Cox is alive, they were worried about their safety. They would not be alone. You have to wonder, here we are, we see Charles has been shot and they have these ideas that something isn't right. What about Melanie Gibb, Melanie Boudreaux, you know, all these other people? They must have an idea by now. Charles Vello's ex-wife shares a little bit of how she felt during this time. Cheryl Wheeler, she quoted, I don't know what happened to him, but I have a lot of ideas, and if they're possibly willing to take out their own, I have to assume the worst. I mean, that makes 100% sense, doesn't it, guys? I mean, if they can hurt the people that they're supposed to love most in our life, who's to say, you know, a stranger isn't going to be just so easy. They find out that Charles Vallow, his remains are going to be cremated. And what I found on an online source was Charles' final wishes were not necessarily to be cremated. However, Lori Cox Vallow, his estranged wife, had his body cremated immediately with no one in his family aware that he had been shot and killed. That is, until um, after he was cremated. She was alternately claiming that he had died of a heart attack or by suicide or both, which are completely untrue. Jumping back to Adam Cox. Remember, Adam says that he didn't hear from Charles and that he didn't push too hard to find out what's going on with Charles until he's at his friend's house on Saturday night, which is a day or two after he's been shot. None of his family members have told him about this incident. Adam talks to his friend, Dr. Lane, and he tells him, I have deep concerns about Charles because I haven't heard from him. Dr. Lane and Adam type Charles' name into the Google search engine, and immediately he says he sees an article attached to Charles. A man died in a family dispute. He was shot by his brother-in-law, Alex Cox. During that time, his son, Zach, was with him. And Adam describes that that moment, him and his son, Zach, break down. The suspicions that their brother and sister could have hurt Charles just become a reality. Many of us wondered, why is it that Janice, she seems to be the ringleader. Why is she defending Lori so Avidly. Adam and Zach get into their car and drive to Ferrix, Phoenix, Arizona, to their parents' home. According to Adam, Janice immediately begins yelling at them. 
Why are you here? You were helping Charles and trying to get Lori committed. And I have to say, and I don't mean this in a malice way, that Janice Cox was the biggest problem during this time. She was one of the main reasons that the family couldn't help Lori. Janice tells Adam how during that 24 hours that Lori had Charles' phone, she goes through Charles' phone only to find texts between Adam and Charles. Charles, who hadn't been deceased very long, his skin barely cold, seems to have little or no remorse. It's at that point that Adam says that him and his son Zach pack their bags and leave his parents' house. From there, they head to Summer's home. At that point, most people would have cut this family completely out of their lives, at least for this time. But that isn't what Adam does. He does quite the opposite. This must be something he's just used to because his family is turning his ba their backs on him and his son all because of Lori's drama and lies. For many people who follow the story, they believe that Adam and Zach seem to be the only ones who have any sense. If you don't fall in line with the fellow, I'm sorry, the Cox family, then you become an outcast. One of Lori's biggest techniques is she likes to use shunning, cutting people out of your life as a way of punishment. And she has done this for anyone who would stand against her. Now Janice is doing it to her own children who are trying to tell their mother and beg with their mother something has to be done before it's too late. Adam Cox says that many of his family members, including his cousins, actually reach out to him at, because they hear these rumors through a grapevine. They too believe that Alex and Lori are both crazy. We'll jump back and forth between the 11th and um, up to around the July 15th here. We know that there are texts being sent back and forth between Chad and Lori, July 13th of 2019. It's only two days later, and it seems that Lori is kind of reaching out to Chad and wanting to hear about his step with Tammy Daybell. But during this time, Chad Dabo has several kids graduating school. Chad Daybell's youngest children are graduating college. He tells Lori concerning the two weeks BYU-Idaho's uh, graduation, July 23rd, Adam is getting his bachelor's degree and Leah and Joe are getting their associates. And all of his kids would be walking at the same ceremony. I feel like she will be gone by then. But I will still have the hoopla to deal with. So I believe that's why the Lord's making me wait. Adam and Joe are Chad's son-in-law. So just know that. And Leah is his daughter. So what is Chad talking about? That, you know, I feel like she'll be gone by then. He's referring to his wife, Tammy, and the fact that she would die. But you can tell that he's having second thoughts on the timing. That this would cause him too much trouble since he's dealing with the kids' graduation. Not the fact that Tammy would love to see her kids graduate. It's just more, it would be too difficult for him to handle all of that and juggle it all at once. That's pretty darn cold. Chad Daybell. One of the first things that he's talking about once Charles is deceased is Tammy's outcome, the mother of his children. He's so casually talking about these very horrible, evil ideas. Does he let her live or take her life? And here he is living this life where everything's normal lying to his children, manipulating his own family, and plotting some very evil deeds. How could this man who claimed to love his family more than anything put his kids in this doomsday scenario as some of the key um, players in the future 
now become something that didn't matter. And the thing is, is he's telling his kids they matter while telling um, Lori Vallow something differently. He's starting to lose uh, interest, you know, in his kids' well-being and their, you know, future. Because now Charles is gone. They've taken another step to build their future together and to build this doomsday future where his kids were once the number one priority of this future today during this time he's starting to push them to the side chad daybell's family has no idea of the man he's become of the man he really is instead in the future he'll start playing the victim but the truth of the reality is he was willing to throw everything out the window that he loved for Lori Fallow. All right, guys, I'm going to cut this one short today. Thanksgiving's approaching, and there was another story I wanted to do. I hope you guys are having a fabulous week. I've been incredibly busy trying to throw, you know, you know how it is. We're all going through it. There's not enough time in the day. Don't forget um, to share these faces of these girls that continue to go missing, that their stories are being forgotten. People like Jasmine Robinson, Dulce, Donita, Summer Wells. It goes on and on. I especially want to thank you guys for all that you do for me. There are some of you that go over and beyond to show support for me. And it's not that I don't recognize it at all. I do. And I appreciate it very, very much. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, like, show some support you know because i put a lot of work in this and i i really do appreciate any kind of help i can get i do absolutely adore and love you guys make sure that y'all enjoy these holidays and you remember what means most to you don't take the people in your lives for granted i love you guys and i'll see you guys soon